Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I go by the name of Dr. Heinz Emerton and today we are going to be covering the whole Sea Boozy disaster show that we have come to see. Now, this is more aimed at people that have no idea what's going on and they just don't know the context to all of this and they may have seen Sea Boozy's latest tweets uh, about him blocking everyone as well as his latest tweets regarding um, Nate the lawyer planting evidence and all, all of those things. They may not have understood the context that led up to that. So this video is kind of hoping to, well, kind of aiming to fill in those gaps. Now, on a fateful day on the 14th of September, Ronco decided to point out that there were some edits that were out of place. It was essentially based on the video that Tug released that showed Tug, if you don't know who he is, is the, the umbrella guy on YouTube. Um, you, you should go subscribe to him if you if you like to follow a lot more Amber Heard content. He pushes that, that out a lot and covers a lot of the going on, going on in that case. He doesn't just cover Amber Heard. I've seen him cover um, the Shia LaBeouf issue, Johnny Depp as well. But primarily, his content is actually geared towards Amber Heard and whatever is going on. Um, with the cases that she that she is now uh, mainly the travelers insurance case where in court she alleged that um, that she was paying a legal fees um, at six at six mil and wasn't able to donate well now it comes out that it was actually an insurance company that was actually paying the money and that doesn't make matters worse is now out that the insurance company are fighting each other on who to pay for the money and are suing Heard as well. Heard is suing uh, her lawyer for, for the whole thing. It's bonkers, but yeah, he covers that as well as Laura Bokoff. But today's video, I just want to focus on Boozy because that video that, um, that I mentioned regarding uh, Tug covering how he has been misquoted as alerted or got the attention of Ian Ronco of Ronco of the Baby and he has decided to tweet out and say and literally say that the Rolling Stone would be embarrassed about this because it includes misquotes and he was right there were misquotes uh, in this whole debacle one of them um, was a stitched together audio that was six hours apart and this is something that much that transpired much later as i said see uh the misquotes were uh were were saying the words she got those psycho eyes she took uh she looks crazy she looks crazy man dip <laughs> man dip she looks crazy she's a nut uh she is disgusting now when he pointed out these misquotes that um because Todd pointed it out Sibuzi decided to um, to enter his mentions and say these are not misquotes. These uh, these are from the original video that he has privated, and he's got the transcripts. He's got the quotes. He's got the receipts. So there's no reason for Ronkel to ideally be saying what he did. So Ronkel he goes on to ask him, okay, where is the transcript? Please show me. And then C. Boozy then proceeded to quote him and give him the, the full transcript um, uh, and tell him that it was actually in the zip file that was uploaded into the report that he gave. Surprise, surprise. Ronko, who had time in his hands, decided to go to the, to, the, to the zip file. And I must admit, it was pretty impressive that he was able to find the information that he did and put it all together in... I'll say like 50 minutes because it's a it's a long transcript it's it's a long zip file that that that, that, that contain all of this piece of information so after finding out this transcript what 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 Ronco pro proceeded to do was to approach Sibuzi himself now Sibuzi's entire argument is we have linked the video to the to the quote bubble so therefore it's, we're not being disingenuous. We were quoting from the transcript, so, so that doesn't constitute a misquote. Now, after Ronco has actually uh, shown and has referred the transcripts, he has uh, decided to then call out Steve Boozy and was like, 
my man, you're straight up lying here. I, I, this is clearly a misquote because here, I've looked through your transcript, these do not even align in the same dialogue. Like, what's going on? He goes on to state, if you're going to be honest, that you should be denoting these edits uh, or these quotes with the dot, dot, dot or ellipses, uh, uh, as it's professionally called, to show that there is a break in these quotes. It's a fair point, but he does go on to negate the point and kind of say that they were because they were six 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 hours apart, therefore the ellipses wouldn't really matter. I mean, I hear the point, but uh, when when other people are reading that, they will kind of look like, oh, you're fighting yourself and you're trying to create a a, a, a scenario in which you can't really lose the argument, which I kind of understand that kind of point, um, but. In the end, it's not actually wrong because technically that would require a new quote because ellipses, um, uh, as he explained it himself, is to denote if someone interrupts you or if it's not really relevant or, or conducive to to the overall point. Like it's like if someone interrupts you, or another scenario would be if I can think. <laughs> maybe you say something that that you weren't supposed to say and then you uh you not not backtrack per se but you take it back and you proceed to say what you really meant to say so that would constitute an ellipsis as well so that was mainly his point is he was like you have misquoted he he um he even gave the timestamp to all of this and there were a couple of people that were confused and were like so you're worried about the context and all of this and you know i guess i guess that's what misquote means i was very surprised to actually see people actually worry about this to see people actually arguing for um arguing about this because it was quite obvious in the face of it especially when he provided the timestamp and the and the uh the the entire he done enough to actually show that this shouldn't have belonged where it it, it it did. They were making arguments that was not really grounded in reality. I even remember one of the users actually saying that what should he have made different quotes and you know and and um, make different quote bubbles, and you know I and that's where I chimed in. I was like, it's like wait a second, that's not necessarily the point. If he wanted to continue with his quote of man dip and crazy man dip because those were actually in tandem with each other. That those were. Um, like that, he could have quoted those two and continued with, and then made a, se a, se a separate quote. So when he brought out the the quote in regards to the psycho eyes, etc., et Sibuzi re responded with, "We had, we gave you the timestamp. We didn't misquote. It wasn't taken out of context, uh, and we gave you the link to the video. So we were not being disingenuous. I mean, the argument blew my mind because I was like, okay, you've done all the right things, but that doesn't excuse, that doesn't really excuse you bringing together it together the way you did. But again, I think Ronko covered it, <laughs> covered it beautifully when he asked. He went on to say, how is it in context if you take a quote from six hours <laughs> later and bring it in? To quotes that do not even belong together like how is that not a misquote and he's right i don't know how anyone can argue around that because this is why i say he's technically right when he said earlier regarding the ellipses and you know and he's right now because the question does actually hit home see boozy didn't really reply to him after he said that he um i think he replied to another user saying that it's in a quote bubble so therefore uh, if we didn't include the link to his transcripts the statement would not be true um his statement would, would be true but because it's in a quote bubble it's okay i mean i have never seen someone grasp for as much straws as this in my life other other users were um like i think squat squat mom squirts i don't know why you call yourself that but whatever uh you know he uh she went and says so because it's six hours apart so because he said it's six hours apart is a misquote <laughs> again i don't know how you can confuse the entire thing but i actually had fun like reading all of this i think the best one on this earth 
has to be awesome Bamon and and I've me personally on Twitter I've argued with this guy many times and honestly I don't want to go after someone's mental capacity but he does make me question quite a bit he goes on to say the definition of misquote is quote written uh, written or spoken word inaccurately so you're implying that, that that umbrella never spoke or said the words he was speaking so again on the surface it's a, i mean it's not wrong that is the definition of misquote but it's there's also another definition which is if you take something out of context which Sibuzi actually knows because I'm going to get to that a bit later. If you take something out of context and you bring it in together, that's also a misquote. So he missed that point. And a lot of people were also feeling this as, as well, saying because Ian said what he said about being six hours apart, he should take the L. And then uh, Ian responded to all of this uh by saying you're dunking yourself basically if you if you believe all of what you're saying yeah so what so what ended up happening was uh ian himself goes on to explain himself it was like if you did separate the quotes and put it in a different quote that would have been fine he wouldn't have you know even made an issue but because he lumped it all together that's the issue even if you provided links all those things there's an issue here and you know <laughs> this is the most again awesome Bamman at it again this is probably the most idiotic argument I've ever seen where, 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 where he says why why doesn't Ian try to use this logic in court of law and say that his client was misquoted I mean I have I I I I I, I, I just didn't understand it I just didn't understand it I I uh, tried to make him see his point by bringing a tweet that he made in the thread, uh, you know, and say I did I I took this tweet and I took this tweet and I brought it together. Did I misquote you? And then he's like, he was stumped. He was like, he was like, you're not really making sense. <laughs> there wasn't an audio quote a tug unless you say you never said those things, you know. The, and and I just. Personally, I just didn't have time for him. It was pretty much chaos from there because all I kept doing was quoting him and bringing in different quotes that, 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 that he said to try and illustrate the point that, you know, you can't be misquoted like that. He just wasn't learning up. Wrong call again. <laughs> like, this is, this is what it's like to argue with these people, like, with these people stands because a lot of these people that support Boozy are actually... Amber Heard stands so and some Meg Meg Meghan Markle maybe a lot of Meghan Markle but I didn't see that on this on this uh, thread it was mainly Amber Heard stands so when I saw that I I already know I, I was going to be placed in bad faith arguments logical fallacies that are through the roof and it, it, it just wasn't going to end well for anybody involved because everybody will look stupid except for them Ronco now com com comes in again when it um when uh when the guy was like i was grasping at straws all of these things he says Ronco says he stitched together quotes out of sentences set it apart while in different contexts <laughs> he presents the burner comments as if suggesting violence you know, and that's a fair point to make, in my honest opinion. So when, so when Ronco actually made that comment, uh, again, Austin Bowman says, try this in court, you know, uh, including cr criminal cases, you know. He was like, try this in court, see if it work, especially in criminal cases. Uh, and then, um, you know, Ronco responds as the lawyer he is, because he is actually a practicing Canadian lawyer. He says if, he, if he's wildly unethical what, what he's doing, he would have an absolute field day if he was to do something like this. So, what did Bamon reply? <laughs> Not he just doubled down. Especially, it's just these. One thing I've noticed: these stands, and they reflect everything. They, they sorry, they reflect and embody everything about the people that they support. If they support Boozy, they will literally be unhinged, and they will literally be boastful and arrogant just because they think they know something 
and it's it, it, it's it's like the old saying of a bird of a feather birds of a feather flock together so when i saw this whole developing i just knew my head hurt my head literally hurt to a point that i was actually getting a migraine because he doubled down basically awesome Bamman doubled down and said in a criminal case he was talking he was talking more about a criminal case that that they wouldn't accept the argument that he was misquoted and then they did the, the he had to he had to remind them listen in a criminal case if you submit a submit if you submit evidence and it was a confession and you stitched together the quote <laughs> it would <laughs> it would be stupidly misleading and that confession would be inadmissible at that point which is not wrong because how do you prove it was actually his confession his confession if it's proven that you've stitched it together in one it's it was and even after this was said he goes on <laughs> he goes on he goes on to double down i would never understand this he says what wouldn't be allowed in court i would never understand this but uh, <laughs> and i and i think runko summed it up perfectly and just left it as that basically just said i can tell you haven't looked at the logs and just left it and it's like it's it's it's, other people have to come in and say please just take the l because this is really a bad look like all of this that's the context of the genesis like what happened on the 14th to the 15th and this was all happening in the in the morning well at least in my time you saw like i went to bed seeing all of this happen so i didn't catch the the fact that um he self edited i didn't catch all of those things but the one thing that that um that really did piss me off was the fact that what i was able to catch with awesome Bamman's arguments in regards to the criminal all of those things it really pissed me off so much that I was like maybe he would listen to me if I was to go and quote see Boozy himself so I went on the internet and I found an interview that he'd done with Inside Edition I think this was uh, if I'm not mistaken 2020 2021 I, I, I don't know it was, it was it was a while ago so I took that interview put it in a made a, a makeshift transcript and um and put the source you know the the youtube you know put the source so so that i'm not misquoting i'm not being mis- disingenuous i quoted everything myself it wasn't a transcript but as you know as c Boozy has admitted or even said that, that he used i mean this guy runs bot sentinel but yeah he trusts bots you know something he's trying to defeat who who knows at this point but anyway all i did was take the quote one by one and bring it all together to make a, a point that the attacks that he that from his investigation into Twitter wars, basically, like you know, into all of this harassment and all this, I brought it up to say that it's coming from one side of the aisle, it's from the left, and it was done by women and black women. That's all I said, and I said. This is not a misquote. It can't be a misquote because of what you have, you know, what you're arguing. And then, Bamman himself was like, <laughs> like, like I'm grasping at straws. I'm doing everything to relinquish dog of responsibility without even seeing the point. And this is the part that cracked me up the most because I didn't expect this to happen from C Boozy because I. I yeah, I tagged him, but I didn't expect him to actually reply. I thought if he saw this, he would be like, sure, uh, uh, like, okay, uh, okay, fine. Let me just go and edit it and leave it alone. But the guy actually responded and was like, this guy is making things up and links the and links his Instagram uh, to the entire video. And I was like, I was like, okay. I mean, that wasn't, that didn't even catch my attention. That caught my attention later on. It was when he quoted the tweet. I was like, if you're going to fabricate a quote, at least make sure there isn't a video. And he goes on to put the context 
something he has been arguing against because the context in that yes I, I did I did everything I did was deliberate I removed everything that that but the part that seemed to bother him was the fact that I removed that the right were doing the attacking but it was still in context because what he was talking about in the video wasn't actually clear who was doing the attacking he was dancing around in the video which I will link also on here so you can go watch he was dancing around the, the the question in the video so that he can make the left look good and what he ended up doing himself was he actually said that women and black women were were the ones well inferred or it would be implied or or taken away from from the video that it would be women and black women that are doing the harassment and the attacks not necessarily the victims of this of this he didn't make it clear so he says I misquoted him, but even even with that taking out of context, there was actually no misquote. So, in a way, I done it like like the the job he was supposed to do was a lot more polished in this in this case. But for him to say what he said and to bring in that context, it clearly bothered him, and he just walked right into it. I never in my wildest dreams thought that someone could be this. I'm not going to say stupid. I'm not going to say all of those words. It's too easy. I never thought someone could be this dense. I'm uh, uh, flipping up. I, I have no idea. I just never thought you could be this, lack this much self-awareness. Like, I, I never saw it coming. And for this guy to do this after spending literally all night, I mean, well, in my time, but probably daytime to them, he spent all of his evening battling tooth and nail to then do this, go back and stealth edit, and yeah, it, it doesn't make sense why you would go through all of this. So a couple of people that saw it were like pointing out, do you not see the do you not see the hypocrisy that's going on and and there was this there there is one commenter that i i'm gonna call him the prophet from from, from now on and um he basically said because because this is when he started blocking people left right center and he basically said you can block all the people you like but you have a, a, a legal action coming you you'll be sorry then i never knew that this guy predicted the future like, like I see. he predicted the future because that is literally what is happening now this wasn't enough for Sibuzi this is where he went on a rampage at Lordship and the most deceptive thing about, about this all is the reason why you can't find this anywhere because he engineered it to a level that you think everyone else is picking on him and he's the victim. He decided to go after one of the law tubers. Law tube is just a term that has been given or coined to, uh, you know, uh, lawyers who are on YouTube. And basically what he did was he went after one of them. And um, I'm not going to show the start of the, because it's all deleted now anyway. So I'm not going to show the start. But what is important, and I believe, again, I'm going to, leave the, the link in this in the description for you to go watch the, the video if you, if you want the full you know the full story behind it but what was alleged in this tweet was that not only there was parking tickets I mean such a bad lawyer to have parking tickets but not only was there parking tickets but there was an alleged criminal case that Rob had in 2007 something that you know, would have effectively stopped him from practicing law if this was true. Now, this was very bad because, you know, on the stream itself, Lord Rob was like, yeah, there's someone else that's called, that's the same surname as him. It's called Roberto Morton. If this wasn't bad enough, you know, he brought all of this out. That was called out. He deleted not only that, uh, when all the law tubers all got together for this explanation, um, Sibuzi begged 
to be part of the conversation and the lodger was like no you you really need to cool off because you're clearly on a rampage right now and this is gonna go in so many ways that it's just gonna implode so after that was said and he saw it he went on to delete the tweet of him wanting to be part of the conversation you know this is something that he has quote unquote declining the pause with Andy Signor who invited him for, for 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 an interview to explain but Sentinel he declined it and said he is only working with real networks so yeah this guy is a walking con contradiction you know to me but he went on to delete this uh, he, he didn't delete this tweet yet there was something that Nate said in the video that he did um, before joining the uh, the law tube, and I think he repeated it in the law tube, but he just called him an idiot. An idiot. He just said, he he said he was <laughs> see Boozy is he's not even he, he's not even gonna call him a b a b word, which is you know I'm not gonna swear on the channel, but he's not even gonna call him that. He's just gonna call him an idiot because it'll be an, an insult to all the bees. So I'm guessing he took offense to that. The reaction from all of that was insane, and I, and I've never seen anyone go this low he goes on to to say that his parents were crackheads and drug dealers saying it was his words and it was such a low blow that i believe nate responded with i'm done i'm done with you like you're, you're trying to shame me because of my parents like I, I'm, I'm literally done he basically shamed nate to a point that nate retaliation he went on to i'm not gonna show the show the, sc the screenshots here but he went on to talk about his bankruptcy and his rent payments that that he he is basically you know owing and it wasn't just one company it was two companies which ew. anyway point being all of these things was the part that incited the whole drama and he went on delete all the tweets then brought in the tweets that he was making regarding the whole bankruptcy issue so this was basically the tweet regarding the whole bankruptcy issue um he wrote a thread detailing all of it and um in these threads you know it goes it details everything that was happening <laughs> this thread before i even made my comment to him which was you said all those things and he deleted the tweet that was that basically was inflammatory towards nate that said if you read my tweet about bank uh, about the whole bankruptcy thing you will know and he deleted it after i called him out on it saying come on man the bankruptcy filing is there you you quoted it you didn't show any of these communications uh with verizon etc all those people to your landlord to even show that you were um that 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 you were being unfairly unfairly treated etc and that's why you had to file for bankruptcy that would have helped your complaint why not put it in there and to be fair now it makes sense because now it's been it, it, it has shown he didn't just put that in there but he also didn't put in but sentinel as his company so it makes sense why he wouldn't want to include that and just include the um the the parents tweet i did not see nay coming with that info regarding um regarding the fact that he omitted you know the bankruptcy thing because all nay was talking about was he filed for bankruptcy that was it that's all i knew be before making making this um making this this thread um, sorry making this post so that's literally i believe that's the context to it all because after all of this he deleted all of the tweets including the tweets towards rob he republished it though and and just guys it as youtube lawyers one has a criminal offense one has and this guy is completely slime because when you now go onto his profile you can't find anything of this and it looks like 
Lordship, we're going after him. He plays the victim so much. If we need an example of Darvo, because I know that that <laughs> Amber Heard stands love to use that word as if it's they love to wear that word as if it's like underwear or something like that. But if you want a best example of that, this is it. Because they, there is nothing worse than inciting something somewhere and then the response coming and then you, you're like, oh, I didn't do that. They're just, they're attacking me. So, but the internet is forever. There will always be screenshots. And I've even found one screenshot that I thought was a bit, especially now that he's accusing Nate of planting evidence. There is one screenshot that I did see but before I go into that screenshot, there was um, there was something that he did that was very disparaging towards Nate, and it, it was making the whole post about him. I, I, and, and to be honest, it was it was his self owned, so I'm kind of happy he did it this part because <laughs> because that the post was about Nate actually not being uh, was actually not saying who he was and wasn't actually a lawyer, and you know he, because he couldn't find the name Nate the lawyer or Nate Brody uh, which was his alias according to Boozy alias don't exist so he couldn't find this under his uh, under the practicing lawyers I don't know exactly what it's called but he couldn't find it in the database so what he ended up doing was making a series of posts saying he's done you know he's done uh, interviews for Forbes all of this so while Nate hasn't done anything or back up his claims you know uh, he's just going to you know just leave this here he thought that was a slam dunk it makes these things look <laughs> too easy for him because a user out of nowhere and ironically ironically his name is his username is this app is cursed so <laughs> it was it fitting but anyway he, he, he said to him, it took me literally five minutes to find this. And you can't even run a business involving bots on the internet. I never laughed so hard in my life because how do you get owned like this? It, it's, 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 it, he says all those things. He, he does all these things. And then someone without even anywhere near his credentials, he's supposed to be looking. He's supposed to be good at researching. supposed to be good at finding things. He couldn't even find this. And I was, I was, this user found his information and posted it and found the interview that was on Nate's profile. All you had to do was look at the profile. He found it there and he posted it and said, look, I, look, what, what are you doing with your life? It was too funny to watch. And I'm kind of happy that, that, that he did this one because yeah, this was, I mean, this, I don't think Nate took much offense to this one because he was like, I am who I say I am. I think he took more offense to the parents one, which because that one was a bit more incriminating. But for him to delete this one, I'm glad because it just showed him up in so many ways. Even after he was shown up, I could not believe his next move because his next move was to reveal, okay, he was a campus cop for 10 years. He, am, he admitted to law school of, of Connie, which was where it was, where it was a, a campus cop joined the DA office and then six years later became a trailer troll and a YouTube quick grifter so he still manages to find a way to dis to just discredit this guy which I'm like bro you should stop by now but I wasn't the only one that was thinking it because when he was on his rampage and revealing all of these things there was another warning <laughs> there was a warning from I believe he was even someone that knows him, that follows him. The person was like, I think you should stop this. <laughs> maybe maybe you both of you are right from your point of view, but uh, like, you know, but she has gone because she. this person has seen all of this thing happen. Uh, you know, she's gone to see this and was like, oh, wait a minute, this is the guy from the trial. And when she said that, he blocked the comments that she couldn't say anymore i'm surprised he, did, he didn't hide this one but even if it did i would have just gone to the replies and just find it anyway anyway the tweet that i was talking about was mainly the the, the tweet in regarding in regards to bot sentinel and he says 
some folks are having grasped uh, just how large and loyal the bot central com community is especially some of the folks at twitter researchers journalists government agencies celebrities and sitting members of congress use bot <clears throat> sitting members of congress use bot sentinel picking a fight with us is silly so he deleted this tweet someone else sent me this tweet i didn't even realize it existed until un, uh, until a friend of mine sent me this tweet and said look bro i think this guy i think this could be really bad for him and he deleted it so i was like why would he delete this so i went on to see what what would happen if you were to become a bot sentinel member you know if you were to sign up register with bot sentinel and actually use the apps Turns out that you can actually use a the app to mass report posts. Um, it does it for you. You don't even have to tell it. It turns out you can. It turns out you can also auto block. You know, you don't even. You just put down the algorithm, and that's it. You know, it, it, it does that. So there is two sides to it. It can be good, as in actually getting rid of the bots, etc. Or it can be used to skew public opinion one way and that is and my head went really wild here because in an election context that is very problematic especially if you were to think of let's say a user um uh that uses but sentinel doesn't really agree with ag agree with a candidate's post it doesn't even have to come from the city member of congress it just has to come from a certain user and then bam that post will be reported and taken possibly taken off mass reported possibly, possibly, possibly taken off twitter which um their friend told me that this would actually be a violation because you uh, apparently you need every tweet to be a, a a a record for you know for the for for the old election i don't know how it works in the us so i just took the person's word for it but this is when i look at it like that i'm like ah oh, i see why you took it down because yeah admitting that and i still can't find any tweets that actually says city members of congress or government agencies or all those things i've looked and it was weird. So, what do I think of Bot Sentinel? I mean, I've done several tweets about it. I personally don't think it does what it says on the internet. I think it's a social engineering tool. Its rating system is all over the place. It's mainly towards anyone of his client that he has actually paid to do, um, to do to to do the bidding of. So, uh, I don't actually believe it does exactly what it says on the tin. It is, you know, everyone <laughs> is getting blocked left, right, center. That so many people are actually messaging me when I when I made a tweet of the reasons why you may be blocked by bot sentinel, and so many people are tweeting me out of nowhere. I've even got accounts that literally says I have never, ever, ever even liked retweeted anything of anything of uh of johnny depp amber heard or megan mark or anything like that he, he never done it and i'm blocked all so many so many so many people out of nowhere like i'm blocked i'm blocked i'm blocked and i've never spoken to the guy so if this is happening if this is happening you can imagine who is allowed to you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it some credit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it some credit. A tool like that kind of preempts possible harassment based on you know uh, previous data for, or whatever, or based on a user pro pro probably thinking, oh, if this person does it, this other person is gonna do it. So let me just kind of protect myself. At the same time, it can be used to skew then a narrative or create a certain narrative where if someone if you create a obvious misinformation people can't actually turn around and actually see the misinformation that that you've created and possibly correct you on it so 
those are the, the, the two sides to, to one thing. And that's, I've got to give Boozy a bit of credit for this as well, because it's quite clever to play along that line so thinly, because you can never know which way. It's, you know, it, it can be seen as good, it can be seen as bad. It's not a bad product in concept, but it threads the line too thinly for me. Like, uh, and that's my own personal opinion. It just, it doesn't do exactly as it says. That's basically it. I personally want to follow Nate's case. I will be, um, um, I will be covering that and the fund for his case. I think he's done now, but you, but you can still donate because he did say that the proceeds is got any excess is going to go to the children hospital of Los, Ange Los Angeles. And the reason for this is F Amber Heard. So it's a good, it's a good idea. So, you know, you can still go and donate for that if, you know, if you want to see that happen, but he has reached his goal. And um, honestly, I'm quite proud. He done it in under 48 hours. I'm gonna provide a link in the description. It's gonna be the first link that I provide. And um, yeah, like, but the goal was to use that um, to, I believe it was set up a retainer and as well as the research cost for all these things. So he's got Ron Coleman and I, I can't I can't remember the other, but it's a lady. I can't remember her name exactly, but it's Ron Coleman and, and um, don't quote me, I, I'm doing it off, off the cuff, but I can't remember um, the other lady that's part of his legal team that's going after him for defamation because he said he planted, um, he planted evidence um, against these criminals. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a very interesting case and I would like to very much cover it. And I hope you took a lot from this, uh, from this deep dive that I done uh, from a user perspective where I try to be as objective as possible. And, you know, it's, it's very hard with things like this because how do you be objective when somebody is pretty much self-owning himself and you kind of, you know, you kind of, you, you just kind of have to side with the people that are making the points that he's going back on, if, if that makes sense. So, I don't know, I, I, I don't know. This was honestly the weirdest case I've seen after after Amber Heard. It's not as weird as Amber Heard because that's, that was weird, but this one was surreal to, to actually see someone self-employed this badly. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you on the, on the next video. Um, more details will be coming out soon on, on, on what I will be talking about. Um, but like but like I said, I will be covering the Nate, the Nate case. So do take care. Don't forget to like this video, share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more and more videos. Even if you agree or disagree, I appreciate you for at least taking the time to watch the video. Take care of yourself and have a good evening. Bless.